just how sharp is super sharp ai super sharp ai is one of the seven extensions released by skylum skylum are the creators of luminar neo and most of you have heard of luminar neo it's just about everywhere on youtube instagram the net now luminar neo is great software it's known for its ai abilities as just about everything is turning ai lately it's a little bit scary but these seven extensions have been released to solve problems that photographers face when taking photos which is good news they cost more but are they worth it we're going to look at super sharp ai in today's video but as the upcoming weeks come upon us, I'm also going to release videos on the other extensions. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, shameless plug, click the subscribe button and hit the bell. So in the video today, I'm going to answer the questions, is SuperSharp AI any good? Who is it really for? And finally, how do you use it? So let's jump in, take a look at it, shall we? Let's start by finding Super Sharp AI, shall we? Well, you can find it when you've opened up Luminar Neo at this section here. You've got a jigsaw piece. It'll either say extras or it'll either say extensions. Click on it and then this will open up the extensions section. You can click on either of these extensions here. We're talking about Super Sharp AI today though and install it. But if you want to save money, there is a link in the description where you can save money getting the extensions. You can get them yearly, you can get them subscription, you can get them one off and make yourself a saving. So it's there if you want to take it. Anyway, let's jump in to this. So we're going to start with this right here, which is an image of my wife when we were out for a nice autumn walk. Now, when we click on edit, we're going to see that we have the super sharp option here. And that's where you find it. There's an extension section and you'll have some of the extensions under here. And one of them is super sharp AI. So if we click on it, it'll open up and you can see you have adjustments and masking. Adjustments is the section we're on now. We've got universal and motion blur. Universal is for fixing more general focus like missed focus which can happen quite a lot of the time if you're not keeping an eye on the settings also motion blur which can be used stylistically and can have some nice effects but when you don't want motion blur it's very annoying and you want to get rid of it with this image though we're going to focus on the problem zooming in you can see that i did a bit of a whoopsie I've got a bit of missed focus here on my wife's face. So we're going to take care of it. Using the universal option here, you've got low, middle and high. And that means you can add a low, middle or high effect. In the case of this image, I don't think it needs more than low. So I'm going to click on it and we're going to see how it performs. OK. And within about 15 seconds, this has loaded through and it has sharpened the image. You can see that we've got a lot more contrast and detail around the lines that make up the face. If we zoom out to 100%, you can see it at a more common distance. And let's have a look at the before to see the kind of effect that it made. So if we click on the eye, this is the before, and then this is the after. So it's certainly done a good job at creating a sharper image and it has taken care of the missed focus. But what happens if now you decide, you know what, I actually just want this applied to the face? The good news is you have the masking option inside. So clicking on that, you can choose one of these options to mask out the rest of the image and just choose the area that you want to make sharpened. So I'm going to click on the brush. You can make different changes to the brush to make it bigger or smaller, softer or harder, and more strength. In this case, I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to decide I want to just make my wife's face sharper. So I'm going to paint over this area and tell Luminar Neo that that's the only area I want to be sharp. Now, this is, of course, very crude and very rough, so... Forgive me for that. And there you go. 
you can see that this has just been applied now to the face. So that makes the tool a lot more powerful having the masking option inside, which is great. Now you may or may not have noticed in the adjustments section, there is also another option which complements the universal option very well. And that's called face enhancer. If we zoom in and we take a look at my wife's face, you can see the job that has been done with the universal option on low. What happens if we add the face enhancer? Well, let's take a look. So this is loaded in a couple of seconds and now you can see it's give a lot softer look to the skin, but it's still kept the sharpness around the edges of the eye and around the features. So if we have a look at the before now, you can see that this was the original image, soft, out of focus, and now we have soft skin, but also a nice sharp image. And having a look at that at 100%, you can see that actually that's made a really nice change. So this is a great little addition that they added in, and I'm really happy that they did that because it just is really gonna enhance the features on a face in portraits. Now, as you can see, there is plenty of motion blur all around the outside of the subject or the lady in this image. She's dancing. And in this image, I happen to want to take care of it and I want to get rid of a lot of this motion blur. Now, there is a significant amount of motion blur in here. And if we go into the edit tab, you might think, hmm, we're going to have to click on the high option here to remove all of that. But what I found with this tool after using it for a couple of weeks now is that you really do not always need to use the high option. In fact, my advice is start low because that's often the way to go. So for instance, let's click on middle here. You would think probably you'd need the high option, but I would suggest if you click on middle, you might even find that that'll be too much. So we're going to give it a go. So middle effect here has done a great job of removing the motion blur. We've now got hard edges and lines, and it's quite incredible how the detail has been put back in the image. But if you look at the face, I think it's a bit too strong of an effect around the face. Looking at the before, you can see that the details have been made quite contrasty. So you could even argue that actually trying the low effect in this case would have been a better option to go. And why not? Let's have a look at it. So if I click back on this, click on low, let's see if that's going to work. And there you go. It's actually taken care of it with low. And now we have a lot more realistic face, which is closer to the original, but just actually taking care of the motion blur. And it's done a really, really good job. There is still a little bit of motion blur in the low effect. So really it's down to you to decide what's more important. Do you want the realism of the face or do you want to take care of all the motion blur in the image and go for the middle effect? But I think it's clear to see that actually, even with an image like this one, where it's got a lot of motion blur to take care of, it's done a great job. So actually, this extension works. It does take a little bit to load, but it works very well. And it's really easy to use. All you have to do is open this up click the drop down here, choose how much you want from your option and go ahead and click on it. So I like how simple Skylum have made it to use. This is going to be appealing to a lot of photographers, which maybe don't really like using complicated software. So who is this for? Well, it's just about for every photographer that is going to encounter these problems and wants an easy way out. They want a way of fixing things like motion blur and missed focus, and they want things like this to take care of it quickly. So the options here. Skylimer have produced a great extension, and I think Supersharp is a really good addition to Luminar Neo. But remember, if you're looking for this kind of thing, it's better to get the extensions as a whole instead of just getting the one extension just click on the link in the description and at least you can have a look at the options there and check out the savings that you can make on what you want to go for or what you may not want to go for. Now I'm going to make more videos 
on the other extensions. I'm going to go into detail with those to see how they perform and see if they are worth it. So if that sounds like your kind of bag, then click subscribe. It'd be great to have you on the channel and whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.